in Burma's secretive capital, the country's military rulers gather for the opening of a new parliament, formed after the first elections in 20 years. The generals want the world to think this is the first step towards democracy. But throughout the election, the exiled media group, the Democratic Voice of Burma, was filming what was really happening. The whole process of the elections was so patently unfree and unfair that it uh, makes a laughing stock of democratic practice. This is the secret story behind Burma's election. Burma has been ruled by a dictatorial junta since a military coup in 1962. For half a century, the military government have crushed any dissent in an attempt to maintain control. In November last year, the junta held an election saying they wanted to move towards democracy and relinquish power at last. But before the country had even got to the polls, secret cameras were finding a different story. During campaigning, one party stood out, the military-backed Union Solidarity and Development Party, or USDP. In the weeks running up to the poll, the USDP was everywhere. Its banners and signs dominated, they had vastly more money and more candidates than any other party. Burma is a country where many areas are lacking basic facilities. With substantially more funding and government support, the USDP was able to offer rewards for people's votes. In the Parle district of Rangoon, voters said USDP candidates weren't satisfied with the usual campaign techniques. In contrast, candidates for other parties find themselves heavily restricted on the campaign trail. Candidates had to apply a week in advance if they wanted to meet more than three supporters at once and anything they said had to be pre-approved. As politician, I want to, to, to respond directly to the voters on their questions. I don't want, definitely don't want to read out the paper. So how can I put uh, a week ahead for what I'm going to say and tell the voters? Yuza Morton is one of few independent candidates who contested the elections. With a registration fee of $500 for each candidate to run, many were unable to afford it. Throughout the campaign, she said she was monitored by military intelligence. Despite the high cost of registration, the USDP managed to field a candidate for every single seat. Links between the USDP and government authorities also raised alarm bells. Rangoon City's mayor and USDP candidate Ong Thane Lin was one of several candidates accused of allegedly using state funds for their campaigns. <laughs> 
ปีแคนบิวอลุกโลนีดาดาบิวโรเวียเนาะบิวโรซีเมนดาไอ้ก่อนบิยงยูตงชาบิวบิวโรซีเมนดาไอ้ก่อนบิยังมงวยตงชา
it was organised by election commission officials. With the advanced voting, it just seemed to be uh, so incredible that there were so many advanced votes and the way in which they came pouring in only, in, in some cases, only after the results had been declared. So there was something uh, very, very uh, un undemocratic, I suppose, is the word one would have to use. Democracy did not feature strongly in this election. The current constitution seems designed to keep the military in power behind a civilian facade, reserving a quarter of the parliamentary seats for the military. Responsible for drafting this constitution was the head of the USDP and Burma's new president, Thane Sein. <laughs> Dane Sain is a former senior ranking general and was prime minister of the military government. Shortly before the elections, he retired from the military and formed the junta-backed USDP. Known as Mr. Clean for keeping out of trouble and with a reputation for absolute loyalty to former army chief Than Shui, some have suggested he was chosen for the role in order to ensure the former dictator keeps pulling the strings. Burma's junta said they held a free and fair poll, but on election day, the camera teams found many were disappointed. The denial of voting rights was widespread and systematic, as the teams found in the town of Dala. On election day, loudspeakers urged voters to the polls. For many of those who were able to vote, there was control and intimidation. No independent observers were allowed to monitor what was happening at the polling stations. The government issued election rules, but officials made sure voters voted in the right way. 
This widespread intimidation meant many voters were not free to make their choice. We thought that whatever rules and regulations the authorities had uh, brought out, at least they should abide by those rules and regulations. And if they did not do so, this was tantamount to a lack of rule and law that could even be interpreted as anarchy. Aung San Suu Kyi's NLD party refused to participate in this election, saying it was never going to be fair. In March 2010, the NLD announced their decision. Despite the NLD's stance, several pro-democracy supporters did decide to run. But on the day of the results, many found themselves disappointed and angry. Despite security, DVB cameramen were able to meet up with Yuza Morton again and hear her reaction to the election. Many other candidates found similar problems. Like Yuza Morton, Democratic Party candidate Cho 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 Nyen lost the vote. But she has now lodged a complaint about what she called unfair state control. Although she is being closely watched, Soon after the elections, she agreed to speak to one of our covert cameramen. She says the local USDP candidate appointed his close relatives as polling station staff who pressured people to vote for him. Despite numerous similar complaints, Cho Cho is the only candidate from outside the USDP who has actually lodged an official complaint. She gave us the official documents to explain why so few are willing to take that step. Some members of Cho Cho's party did win seats. But according to the party leader, U Thu Wei, their USDP rivals are still pursuing them.
we don't think it's necessarily a step forward towards democracy. I have said time and again that a blatant dictatorship is better than a parody of democracy, because if there's a parody of democracy, it makes people uh, complacent, it makes them think, or at least it gives them an excuse to say that there is no longer any ne necessity to work for democracy in Burma. The NLD launched a no-vote campaign to try and get people not to vote. The actual turnout is disputed. The NLD claims its campaign was successful. We as the NLD have enough evidence to, to think that our campaign was a success and that less than 50% of the voters went to the polls. But thousands did turn out for the woman who many consider the rightful ruler of Burma. Just one week after the election, the military released Aung San Suu Kyi from several years of house arrest. Despite her uncompromising rhetoric and undoubted popularity, the NLD is facing challenges. It has been banned as a party, and some question what Aung San Suu Kyi can do now a military-dominated parliament rules. For more than two decades, the NLD has been surviving because of the support of the people. Even when we were supposed to have been an officially registered political party, we were deprived of our rights as a political party. So the survival of the NLD, the strength of the NLD, is not in any registration office, but in the will of the people. But the will of the people has never been a match for the military might and control in Burma. And as well as making sure they are entrenched in the government, the military have found other ways to consolidate control. Shortly after the election, news broke that Burma are introducing mandatory military service. <laughs> As well as increasing the size of Burma's army, a clause of the draft allows retired military men to assume their previous post in the case of a national emergency. So while Burma's former dictator appears to have stepped down from any position of authority, this draft will allow him to retain a hold on the country. The draft may also help the army to control many of Burma's volatile border regions where they do not yet have power. On the day of the elections, ethnic Karen troops took control of the border town of Miawadi. The Burmese army retaliated and a battle broke out along the border. Since then, this Karen group has formed an alliance with other rebel armies, strengthening their resistance against the Burmese army and the fighting in eastern Burma continues. But the biggest battle will come over what happens next. The world is waiting to see whether this so-called civilian government will make the changes that Burma needs. The new president and his wife's name still appear on EU sanctions lists, along with other key members of the former junta and its cronies. The military's main aim now is to end sanctions. Southeast Asia and a growing number of nations in Europe agree. But with little to show for genuine change, Aung San Suu Kyi says the time is not right. I do not think it would, it would help if the, the international community were to deceive itself into thinking that there has been genuine progress. With regard to sanctions, the NLD brought out a paper to explain why we think that this is not yet the time for sanctions to be modified or to uh, be removed, and that there should be a review of the whole situation. 
and uh, what we would really want the international community to do is to insist on an all-inclusive political process in Burma. But the country's state-controlled media has warned that unless Suu Kyi and her party end their call for sanctions, they will meet their tragic ends. And in Burma, that is no idle threat. <laughs>